dirt and filth around. But we have a really interesting team of young men who started their own recycling company called Bullhorn Recycling Foundation to actually deal with this program problem hands-on. So let's have a look at the Bullhorn Foundation. Bullhorn Recycling is just a, a household plastic collection system. So basically we target more low-income neighborhoods like Newtown, Kotobabi, Alajo. We are pretty much in the Accra Central area for now. It is always a six-day work week for Rodney Mills and his Bullhorn Recycling team collecting trash from communities as his way of giving back and also keeping the environment clean. Rodney and his team don't do it alone though. He enlists the services of women in the communities he collects from for a fee. We came up with um, a strategy. We, we, um, when we get you as a collector, we register you. We give you a registration card. So in the registration card, we let you know the kilos you've collected. So you are actually aware of what you are doing for your environment and your small space. But for most of Rodney's collectors, for about seven to nine CDs a bag, saving the environment is just on the side. If you look at like a typical 52-year-old lady living in the in Newtown, I mean, she's not. Once she's realized plastics are making money, she's not going to be thinking of how she's saving the environment. Obviously, she's going to be going for the money. So we let them know that indirectly they are helping the environment, even though they are going for the money. So we, we make them a little conscious, even though in their, in their sense they are going for the money. But we let them know that, okay, even though you are going for the money, this is what you do too. So. Ishmael is Rodney's project manager. He keeps tabs on the collection system, so he gives us some insight into the collection process. How, how have you noticed? Do people, is the general population, they, they just want the money, or you also see people doing it for the community? What happens? Well, some does it for the community, and then some does it for the means of finance. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, we are dealing with the low poverty areas. Mm -hmm. So, some does it to get the money to fund their school fee, their kids' fees, some to buy books, basically for the family, you understand? How long does it usually take to collect all the trash? Well, some, some do do it, you know, it depends on the customer because some does it, uh, it's, it's, their, it's the job that they do, okay. you understand? And then some also is part of, is their part-time job. Okay. So depending on the customer, you know what you can get from here, maybe for a week or two. I'm a town planner by profession, and um, what town planners do is we try and solve issues pertaining to overcrowding, congestion, sanitation. So um, I came up with this quest to find a problem, to find a solution to the problem of waste management. I mean, there's some companies actually doing some collection and stuff. Okay, so I was. I came up with a personal research to be able to understand the waste management patterns employed in Accra specifically. So what happened was um, I used to see these plastic vans moving up and down, like vans loaded with plastic. So I figured, I mean, there's people actually in the recycling process, which is another part of waste management. Okay. So I went further to investigate and realized even though there's these guys collecting, there are still some areas that haven't been collected. In my research, I realized the collection is not thorough. They just have um, their personal guys. These middlemen, okay, these middlemen have their personal guys they go to to collect. So when you see a van, a, a full van of plastics, it's just from one guy, one collector. So the others are not in the picture. Secondly, um, it's become a business, you know, so 
the more people get to know they want to be involved. So the problem came, um, to locate a new collector was a problem because um, if you've lived in the low income neighborhood before, you realize there's lots of rivalry between the households. They, once one is once is make, making money, they don't like to share that information with the other. So once a new collector comes in, now she has to go through the process of looking for someone to buy, which is very long. So that's how it came about. I just decided to employ my own van and try and target the new customers. Okay, I'm going to take it back because probably we know you and you've been part of our journey since so long ago, since Canada Day. Yeah, man. What, what made you decide that you were leaving Canada and coming back to Ghana and to start your journey? Well, um, moving to Ghana was kind of unplanned, planned, you know. Um, after I graduated, I started working for a financial company. Um, and I Is was, that what you studied? No, that's not what I studied. I did geography and planning. But you know planning has some statistical base. Okay, so basically I was, I was into financial accounting and all that. I did it for two years. I realized it wasn't working for me because, I mean, I wasn't using my ideas on paper. It was very monotonous. You go to work. So I decided, you know, why not come to Ghana, check the scene out, see what's happening and try and um, come up with something. If it doesn't work, like we all do, <laughs> we always go back. But I came to stay, you know, like my first year wasn't that bad, you know. Um, I was because moving... when you moved to Ghana, you started working for exactly. a planning... Exactly, a planning consult. But it took me a year to get that job, actually, yeah. But during my time looking for a job, I was pretty much a trader looking around. You know, I was... I, I used to concentrate myself around the Newtown areas, the Malata areas. So once I started planning, I kind of reconnected back there and try and solve some issues there, you know, because that was the base I was always hanging out. Yeah. Um, what have been the biggest challenges that you have faced in, in coming back and setting up your recycling company? Wow, um, everything moves like twice as slowly, you know, like trying to get contacts to move you forward is, is so much work, you know, you have to keep booking appointments, they keep disappointing you, you know. First, you feel, you feel you're the only one in the, in the situation, but when you talk to other people, you realize you're not the only one. So that kind of pushes you forward, you know, it, it gives you hope to move forward, yeah. Where do you see Oakland Recycling Company going? What are your goals and dreams for your company? Well, we want to be, for the next, from now to the next five years, we want to be the biggest plastic collector in the whole of Greater Accra. So that's, that's our timeline. Um, currently, we are based in Newtown, Malamata Market, um, Jamestown, Alajo, Kaukudi, mostly low-income households. Yeah, um, we're trying to expand to some areas that are not necessarily low income, but they still collect. Um, we have customers in Airport West. They, they still belong to that low income bracket, but they are within a community that's a wealthy community. But we still go in there. We got customers in Jolulu as well. So we're trying to expand towards the Tema area. Yeah. Would you ever open your own recycling plant? I mean, obviously that's the plan. We don't, we don't, uh. <laughs> we, we don't want to be feeding someone else's plants, you know, for the rest of our lives. Obviously, you're trying to build a collection base. Once you get that collection base, you can keep your machine running 24 hours, seven days a week. We are the Bullhorn Recycling Team, and we encourage everyone to be. Recycling, you know that's something that, I don't know, from, from even my house, I'd love to recycle, but where would I take that to? Mm. It's not really yeah. active. And Rodney, the founder, basically, he was telling us, you know, he is a diaspora who came back to Ghana. And he was saying, you know, in, 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 in Canada where he was living, and I'm sure also in other European countries and everywhere around the world, they have, 
you know, you do plastic recycling, you mm -hmm. do paper, you do uh, your fruit waste, organic waste. So there's so much happening. But in, in Africa and in Ghana, you know, we, we don't really look at it Not that way. Problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we don't have time for that. But the one good thing is it really, the people that are working with him really keep their communities clean as a consequence, even though they're really just interested in the money. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going for a break, but we'll be back soon. Still to come, new chick on the block, Miss Posh. After the break. You know they scare me, Halloween, lightweighters, yeah, I need more calories.